Hello my dear children myself Sujata in the last class we learned about how is a major policy decision taken who are the decision makers what is an institution and the need for political institutions in this session we will be learning about what a parliament is why do we need a parliament two houses of parliament regarding the political executive and powers of parliament okay so what is a parliament in all democracies an assembly of elected representatives exercises supreme political authority on behalf of the people in india such a national assembly of elected representatives is called parliament at the state level this is called legislature or legislative assembly the name may vary in different countries but such an assembly exists in every democracy it exercises political authority on behalf of the people in many ways so try to find out the name of parliament in other countries parliament consists of the president and two houses that is the lok sabha and rajya sabha the prime minister must have the support of a majority of lok sabha members okay why do we need a parliament parliament is the final authority for making laws in any country this task of law making or legislation is so crucial that these assemblies are called legislatures parliaments all over the world can make new laws change existing laws or abolish existing laws and make new ones in their place parliaments all over the world exercise some control over those who run the government in some countries like india this control is direct and full those who run the government can take decisions only so long as they enjoy support of the parliament parliaments control all the money that governments have in most countries any of the public money can be spent only when the parliament sanctions it parliament is the highest forum of discussion and debate on public issues and national policy in any country parliament can seek information about any matter so why do we need a parliament it is the final authority for making changing or abolishing laws parliaments all over the world exercise some control over those who run the government and even it control all the money that governments have and it is the highest forum of discussion and debate on public issues and national policy in any country okay now let us try to understand the two houses of parliament since the parliament plays a central role in modern democracies most large countries divide the role and powers of the parliament in two parts they are called chambers or houses one house is usually directly elected by the people and exercises the real power on behalf of the people the second house is usually elected indirectly and performs some special functions the most common work for the second house is to look after the interests of various states regions or federal units in our country the parliament consists of two houses the two houses are known as the council of states or rajya sabha and the house of the people or lok sabha the president of india is a part of the parliament although she is not a member of either house that is why all laws made in the houses 
come into force only after they receive the assent of the president okay now let us try to do an activity to understand the differences between lok sabha and rajya sabha okay answer these questions what is the total number of members in lok sabha and rajya sabha who elects the members what is the length of the term that is in years and can the house be dissolved or is it permanent so lok sabha or lower house the representatives are elected directly for 5 years and the total number of members it is 545 and the tenor is for 5 years and talking about rajya sabha rajya sabha or upper house representatives are elected indirectly from state and union territory legislative assemblies for 2 years and the total members it includes 245 the tenor is permanent okay we discussed about two houses of parliament now let us find out which of the two houses is more powerful it might appear that the rajya sabha is more powerful for sometimes it is called the upper chamber and the lok sabha the lower chamber any ordinary law needs to be passed by both the houses but if there is a difference between the two houses the final decision is taken in a joint session in which members of both the houses sit together because of the larger number of members the view of the lok sabha is likely to prevail in such a meeting lok sabha exercises more powers in money matters once the lok sabha passes the budget of the government or any other money related law the rajya sabha cannot reject it the rajya sabha can only delay it by 14 days or suggest changes in it the lok sabha may or may not accept these changes most importantly the lok sabha controls the council of ministers only a person who enjoys the support of the majority of the members in the lok sabha is appointed as the prime minister if the majority of the lok sabha members say they have no confidence in the council of ministers all ministers including the prime minister have to quit the rajya sabha does not have this power so there is an activity for you try to find out the powers of the two houses of parliament that is what is the role of the speaker and role of the opposition and make a note of it so 7 december 2004 was an ordinary day in the life of the 14th lok sabha so try to read out what happened in the course of that day identify the role and powers of the parliament on the basis of the proceedings for the day okay now let us try to know about what do we mean by political executive in the story of the office memorandum we found that the person who signed the document did not take this decision he was only executing the policy decision taken by someone else we noted the role of the prime minister in taking that decision but we also know that he would not have taken that decision if he did not have support from the lok sabha in that sense he was only executing the wishes of the parliament thus at different levels of any government we find functionaries who take day to day decisions but do not exercise supreme power on behalf of the people all those functionaries are collectively known as the executive 
they are called executive because they are in charge of the execution of the policies of the government thus when we talk about the government we usually mean the executive okay now let us try to understand the differences between political and permanent executive in a democratic country two categories make up the executive one that is elected by the people for a specific period and it is called the political executive political leaders who take the big decisions fall in this category in the second category people are appointed on a long term basis this is called the permanent executive or civil services persons working in civil services are called civil servants they remain in office even when the ruling party changes these officers work under political executive and assist them in carrying out the day to day administration the civil servant is usually more educated and has more expert knowledge of the subject the advisers working in the finance ministry know more about economics than the finance minister sometimes the ministers may know very little about the technical matters that come under their ministry this could easily happen in ministries like defense industry health science and technology mining etc okay now let us have a discussion on why should the minister have the final say on these matters in a democracy the will of the people is supreme the minister is elected by the people and thus empowered to exercise the will of the people on their behalf she is finally answerable to the people for all the consequences of her decision that is why the minister takes all the final decisions the minister decides the overall framework and objectives in which decisions on policy should be made the minister is not and is not expected to be an expert in the matters of her ministry the minister takes the advice of experts on all technical matters but very often experts hold different opinions or place before her more than one option depending on what the overall objective is the minister decides okay now let us try to discuss on prime minister and council of ministers prime minister is the most important political institution in the country so who is the most important political institution in the country prime minister is the most important political institution in the country yet there is no direct election to the post of the prime minister the president appoints the prime minister but the president cannot appoint anyone she likes the president appoints the leader of the majority party or the coalition of parties that commands a majority in the lok sabha as prime minister in case no single party or alliance gets a majority the president appoints the person most likely to secure a majority support the prime minister does not have a fixed tenure he continues in power so long as he remains the leader of the majority party or coalition so now try to find out the name of narendra modi government the council of ministers present in his government okay after the appointment of the prime minister the president appoints other ministers on the advice of the prime minister 
the ministers are usually from the party or the coalition that has the majority in the lok sabha the prime minister is free to choose ministers as long as they are members of parliament sometimes a person who is not a member of parliament can also become a minister but such a person has to get elected to one of the houses of the parliament within 6 months of appointment as minister council of ministers is the official name for the body that includes all the ministers it usually has 60 to 80 ministers of different ranks no minister can openly criticize any decision of the government even if it is about ministry or department every ministry has secretaries who are civil servants the secretaries provide the necessary background information to the ministers to take decisions the cabinet as a team is assisted by the cabinet secretariat this includes many senior civil servants who try to coordinate the working of different ministers now try to find out the names of the union executive which includes president vice president prime minister and council of ministers so you have to find out the name of the cabinet ministers ministers of state deputy ministers and parliamentary secretaries okay now try to do this activity list the names of five cabinet ministers and their ministries each at the union level and in your state meet the mayor or municipal chairperson of your town or the president of jilla parishad of your district and ask him or her about how the city town or district is administered and collect data for the same and prepare a note on it okay now let us recap what we have learned in this session we talked about parliament and we know that it is the supreme legislative body who makes laws then we talked about why do we need a parliament and we know that parliament is the final authority for making changing or abolishing laws it has direct and complete control over the government and it controls and manages money with the government and it is the highest forum for debates discussions and deliberations then we talked about two houses of parliament that is lok sabha and rajya sabha lok sabha also known as lower house it has representatives elected directly for 5 years it has 545 members and its tenure is for 5 years and rajya sabha also known as upper house its representatives are elected indirectly from state and union territory legislative assemblies for 2 years it has 245 total members and its tenure is permanent okay then we talked about functionaries that is at different levels of any government we find functionaries who take day to day decisions but do not exercise supreme power on behalf of the people all those functionaries are collectively known as the executive they are called executive because they are in charge of the execution of the policies of the government thus when we talk about the government we usually mean the executive so president prime minister and council of ministers come under political executive president heads the political executive president is elected by electoral college his major functions include appointment of the prime minister council of ministers the chief justice etc all bills become law once he signs he addresses the session of parliament and we know that prime minister is the most important political institution in the country and 
Council of Ministers is the official name for the body that includes all the ministers. It usually has 60 to 80 ministers of different ranks. Then we talked about the powers of parliament. Now go through the slides again and again. Meet you in the next session. Thank you.